Hi there, Scott Rockfile, back with another podcast review for you. Going to talk about the 4K edition of the 2014 film, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Three years after doing a great job rebooting, restarting, and, and I don't know, prequeling a great series, uh, they came back with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. They spent almost double the budget. It was a $170 million budget. Went on to gross over $700 million. It's almost 30% more than the last movie, which made you know almost $500 million. Um, it did very well. It's, it's the biggest commercial success of the three of the modern trilogy. Critical success would go to the third one, but maybe because that movie was a little more complex, a little darker, maybe that's why it didn't do so well. Maybe there was a little ape fatigue. I don't know. We'll get to that when I rewatch it. So after two days after watching Rise, I thought it was time to watch Dawn. Uh, some of the same writing team return, Rick Jaffa and uh, Amanda Silver. They bring in Matt Reeves to direct. Funny, I looked him up because I know who Matt, he the first thing I knew he directed was Cloverfield, which was pretty good for a found footage film. And he went on to direct these. And now he directed the most recent Batman movie that was pretty darn good. He's done some TV stuff. He's done some other stuff. But he started, he co-wrote the script for Under Siege 2, that Steven Seagal movie, when he was still in film school. And that got him the job. He worked on the Cloverfield script. And that got him the job with J.J. Abrams' company. And that's how they developed Cloverfield. So anyway, that's how he got into the movie business. And he was brought in as a new director for this movie and went on to direct the third movie and go on to have a great career. So obviously they picked the right dude. Not that I thought um, the director of the last movie did a bad job. It was a great film. So this one, I would take it up a notch. If that was a four to four and a half film, this is a four and a half to five. They really, t- they're doing it right. They got a arguably better cast. Andy Circus now gets top billing because the movie opens and closes with him. It's his movie. You've got Jason Clark, Gary Oldman, Kerry Russell, Toby Kebbell, and Cody Smith McPhee. Also, Kirk Acevedo, who was a big character in the 12 Monkeys TV series, plays the guy you hate in this movie. And it's, It's interesting how they get into, it's definitely a more morally complex movie than the first one because it's getting in all of the, on the human and ape side, into racism, into, you know, people just being closed-minded about things. Um, Apes don't trust humans. Humans don't trust apes. You know, it. this really, from the beginning to the end of this movie, tells the big swing of where things are going in the Planet of the Apes universe in this modern telling. The, it starts with the virus, I'm not giving anything away, this is how the movie opens. The virus, um, one out of 500 people survive or something like that by the end of it, by the end of this montage that the movie opens up, which is how the last movie ended. It goes through everything we try that this virus mutates and it, it just it wipes out mankind and makes apes smarter. <laughs> so we did it to ourselves. And the Kirk Acevedo character believes that, well, it's it was called a simian flu, so it's an ape flu. Yes, but man made it. Man was trying to cure Alzheimer's, and this got out. We see what happened in the begin- in the end of the first one, how it got out. So this one mostly takes place in a, it's 10 years after. It's a decrepit uh, San Francisco. It's been overgrown. People are gone. There is a small colony of humans, and they reach out trying to get to this dam to restart it for power for this small section of San Francisco, and they run into some apes, and they haven't seen each other. There's a conversation with the apes at the beginning. Uh, It's been 10 winters, and we haven't seen them in the last two, so they're probably all gone. (laughs) You know, Love how it's written. Love how they show both perspectives. Um, Gary Oldman isn't fully unhinged like he is in other movies. He's got he's really just trying to protect his people. But, you know, he's still kind of a jerk in the end. Uh, Jason Clark, you know, he's a great actor. He's just been they've cast him in some roles that were just thankless, like his role in that Terminator movie. Poor dude. I mean, he got stuck with a role that nobody was going to be happy with him playing. He gave it his best shot. I think he's always great in everything, just about. Um, but he's had some some crucial choices uh, based on characters that should, you know, probably played really well on the on the script, but not so well in the in the finished film. And the movies didn't do well. But he's a great actor, and and 
anchors the film and somebody who really cares and knows how to bridge the gap between the closed mindedness and the conversation that he and Caesar have towards the end is amazing. This is, you know, taking the idea that apes became intelligent and took over the world is a silly concept at its core. What Pierre Boulle was doing back in the 60s, you know, he was commenting on things of the time. And they've taken it in the 70s and 80s and now into modern storytelling realms where we fully understand what they're getting at, what they're discussing. Um, And it's all done with such visual style and panache. It's great cinematography. First thing I noticed about this 4K is it's much more lush looking. When they're walking through the jungle, the different hues of green, the HDR really pops in this one. We go from a 5.1 on the first movie to a 7.1 mix on this movie. Much better, much more enveloping, much more modern sounding. This all around felt like a more modern movie than the first one, but they also spent almost twice the budget on it. So that's a lot more money to spend on the music. Uh, Giacomo did the music, um, the surround sound mix, the special effects. The special effects are stronger. They hold up to more scrutiny. There are many close-ups on ape faces that are flawless. You see the little hairs, the wrinkles, the tear ducts, the, you name it. It's the most detailed, up-close um, 3D computer digital animated motion captured characters that we had at the time. You know, now we've got Avatar and it's pretty impressive, but this is on that level. When they do the close ups on Caesar's eyes, well, you know, I'm sure they morphed in Andy Serkis's real eyes into it, but still, it's a digital creation. It's a monkey. And there's a little bit of makeup as they go back and forth. I guess that's how they kind of blended the faces to make them look as real as they do. I don't know. It's. Each ape is given like their own look based on scars or war paint or whatever. So it's much easier to tell the different characters in this one, the facial expressions, whatever. There's some great scenes with the humans and the apes working together. It, this just movie works as a Planet of the Apes film. When you watch the later ones from the 70s, it just they went a different direction than this. This is more, I don't know, realistic on a silly concept. That's what I was getting at anyway. They're doing a great job with these movies. I can't wait to see the fourth one. I can't wait to watch the third one, which I own. But like I told you in the last review, they are have already finished filming one for next year. It was finished before this strike. So we should get the movie next year, although they may not be able to, you know, do the re-recording and special effects and all that stuff. I don't know what process it's in, but it's still on the schedule to be released sometime in 2024. Kind of psyched about it. It's going to tell Cornelius' story. Caesar is still in this film. It's Koba is still a big character. He's got a wife. He's got blue eyes, the kid. They have a new kid. You know, it's again, if the last movie was a four to four and a half, this is a four and a half to five. I can't wait to watch, wait to watch War of the Planet of the Apes. Dawn was great. Again, like I said in the last review, rewatch this trilogy. It's better than you remember. They did it right. Everybody complains about reboots, remakes and, and whatever. Planet of the Apes was done right love the new trilogy so far we'll get to the third one here in the next couple of days so thank you so much for listening taking time out of your day to listen to a podcast is a wonderful thing and i appreciate it have a spectacular day